I'm Bjorn Stigson. I'm uh, the former president of the World Business Council for Sustainable Development. And I've been involved with energy and uh, uh, these type of sustainable development issues for more than 25 years. Uh, it, it is, sustainable development is a uh, topic that is uh, uh, always uh, evolving depending upon the circumstance. I mean, we know that it's got certain components. We know that it's about the environment, we know it's about economic sustainability, we know it's about social, uh, but exactly what that means is really defined uh, by the circumstance in which it's being applied. I think that uh, the world is clearly facing uh, a situation where we will have to move uh, to a low carbon uh, economy. And that has to happen uh, in a context where we know that over the next uh, uh, 25 years we will increase energy demand with about 40%. Uh, and so how do we then create an energy system which is not destroying the climate? And that means that we, we need then to look at uh, uh, clean energy or low carbon energy. And uh, uh, nuclear is one such uh, energy source. At the same time, we know that uh, the traditional uh, nuclear uh, is being met with quite a lot of skepticism from the public. Thorium uh, represents potentially one of the new uh, nuclear technologies that could have a higher degree of acceptability than the traditional uh, technology. The first issue in, in most countries is uh, acceptability by the public. And uh, uh, accidents like uh, Fukushima in Japan doesn't help. And you, you, you know that, uh, uh, for instance, in, in Germany, the decision has been taken to shut down nuclear. In Sweden, the decision has been taken to, over time, shut down nuclear. So we, we are faced with a, a perception problem. And uh, uh, people uh, are nervous about the risks. and. Uh, uh, it's not easy then for uh, politicians, for the government, to push uh, and, and say you are going to have nuclear whether you like it or not. That this is a, a very uh, difficult issue in many countries. I think in uh, emerging economies like uh, India, like China, where there is a desperate need uh, for electricity, there you have a somewhat different situation. And I can see that uh, India will uh, have a big share of energy coming from nuclear and from uh, renewables, solar in particular. Um, they, they will not be able to uh, rely on coal uh, to, uh, as a main source, uh, even if they have a lot of coal in, the, in this country. But uh, they, will, they will have to rely on the new uh, power sources. The, the challenge is that uh, actually nuclear has been pretty safe. I mean, if you, if you compare nuclear with coal power, there are many more people that have died or, or become ill because of coal power. But uh, that is not an unknown thing. Uh, nuclear is something that is happening to you that you don't control at all yourself. Uh, you can compare it with, with smoking. Uh, smoking is more lethal than, than nuclear, but you decide yourself. Uh, so it, uh, it, it, it is this issue that uh, you're being exposed to something which is out of your control and you don't fully understand. And who will deliver the trust that this is okay? Uh, and in my speech, I, I talked about that we have di different roles in society. And uh, governments and business don't have much trust with the public. So if we go out and say, trust us, this, this is safe, then that is not being perceived as the truth. So 
instead who who will be the suppliers of, of trust and uh, the, the the natural suppliers of trust uh, are uh, civil society that says well this this is a good trade off this is not perfect but it's it gives us a number of other advantages and so we support that that you go down this track academia has more trust than governments uh, uh, and, and business but they are normally not very good communicators and uh, so they have got difficulties in in playing that role but if we want to have more nuclear we need then to find the alliance uh, the partnership between governments, business, civil society, and the academic world as well. Uh, government certainly has the role to create the regulatory framework. I am not impressed with uh, uh, state-owned enterprises anywhere. I don't, I don't think you can build a, a broad program and rely on state-owned companies to be efficient, to be honest. Uh, and uh, uh, what, what what we see in other, in other parts of the world is that uh, uh, you have uh, the energy system normally owned by uh, private enterprise because private enterprise is normally more entrepreneurial, more uh, efficient in, in doing this. But government certainly has a role as a, providing the frame, the regulatory framework, the oversight. And uh, there are many areas uh, within the research and development that uh, requires involvement by uh, by government, uh, uh, but actually operating uh, energy systems is not something that uh, I believe uh, uh, is uh, the norm, the best way to, to use uh, uh, than government uh, uh, involvement. But what we heard yesterday was. Uh, uh, that uh, uh, India, for instance, has uh, uh, smaller uh, reactors and could also utilize uh, these for thorium. Uh, a country like uh, uh, India that uh, uh, has a, a rather inefficient transmission, uh, electricity transmission system, for them to have smaller scale nuclear that uh, makes it easier to manage uh, uh, than the transmission capacity. I was talking to a gentleman from uh, Sri Lanka who was looking at how, how should I deal with the electricity in Sri Lanka. Well, a smaller thorium reactor could be a part of the solution. So, uh, that combined with, with solar, where you don't need any big uh, transmission systems, could be a very good combination for uh, uh, for emerging economies, but then when when you come to uh, very big countries like uh, uh, China, uh, there you need also uh, big central uh, power stations because you you have uh, process industries that require much more capacity, and that's also the case for uh, for India. So I don't think that uh, 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 there is just one solution. You need. Uh, uh, horses for courses, and uh, uh, you need a, a mix uh, of different types of nuclear um, and, and other renewable systems uh, uh, to have a, a well-functioning, efficient system. Yeah, that's a very good question. Uh, uh, it seems like we are close to uh, breakthroughs on technology, as far as I can judge. Now, I'm not a, uh, an engineer or a technology person, but as far as I can judge when I listen to uh, uh, people, the bits and pieces seem to be uh, there, but it's not been tested on a, on a full scale and, and put into, uh, into operations. So we, we could probably, in 10 years' time, be into a first phase of uh, uh, implementation of thorium-based uh, energy. But it's probably, uh, to have thorium playing a major role is probably a longer term uh, journey than, than the next 10 years. But we could be in the first phase of implementation. Uh, yes, it does. Uh, and uh, the International Energy Agency 
believes that we need more uh, nuclear power uh, as part of that uh, solution. Uh, the challenge is that they are also talking about uh, the need for more short-term solutions. So uh, the first thing that you need to do to deal with climate is actually drive energy efficiency. Uh, and uh, when I uh, look at what the International Energy Agency has said, uh, they, they see that over the next 15, 20 years, the biggest contribution to emission reductions is energy efficiency. Uh, that is, and, and, and it's energy efficiency on the consumption side. It's not how we produce energy. It's how we use it uh, in, in buildings, in transport, uh, in, and so on. Uh, that, that's the first thing that you have to do. Potential is very big. India is not a very energy efficient country. <laughs> There's big potential on that. Then the next thing you have to do <coughs> excuse me, is to uh, look at energy sources that you can more easily implement. Solar. A massive use of, of solar uh, would make a lot of sense, uh, especially for the many millions of people that don't have access to electricity and, and in rural areas. That could be an important element, and that means that you would not then burn, uh, uh, burn uh, wood, uh, and you can instead let the wood stand and, uh, and, and be uh, then a carbon sequestration. But those type of solutions, but over time you need to complement that with, uh, uh, with other energy sources. And, and if you then look at that, uh, what are these energy sources, well it, it's hydro power um, and uh, we have uh, uh, built uh, a lot of the, uh, the hydropower that is possible to build in, uh, in the world, but there is still capacity, especially in Africa. And, and then it's nuclear. Then it's wind, but wind is more complicated uh, than, than solar. So uh, I don't think anyone believes that wind could be the mainstay of, of electricity generation. Solar could over time, uh, but it, to get a solar-based, a totally solar-based energy system, it will take a long time. Uh, uh, the Shell Group, uh, the oil company, has looked at scenarios, uh, and uh, they say we could have a, we could phase out coal probably over a period of 20 to 25 years, and replace that with gas. Uh, so we could have a, a, ga a gas uh, base load uh, energy system by 2040. Uh, if we were to try to go for a solar solution, it will take another 30 years, up to 2070. Uh, and if you look at uh, the accumulated emissions uh, up to 2100, the end of the century, the gas alternative is going to reduce emissions more uh, because you get uh, faster reductions than what you get with solar. But in the longer term, so one could see, you have to then find going forward some kind of balance between the speed in which you put in solar versus you take out coal and replace it uh, with gas. Uh, uh, so gas will probably play a, uh, a role as a, as a bridging towards uh, uh, more uh, completely carbon-free energy systems. You have, uh, it's not just energy, I mean you, you have in the developing countries or emerging economies, or as we probably call them, uh, a, a built uh, up uh, not uh, fulfilled demand of all kinds of, of uh, products and services on the consumption side. From energy as, as a basic requirement to things like transport, You've got, uh, in the emerging economies, about, about one billion people that have no access to transport other than walking on dirt roads. Uh, you have the need for more water, which requires also energy. You have the need for more food, and the, the issue of uh, how, how you manage then, uh, the energy. Uh, so th there is no easy answer uh, uh, to, to this. You have to drive... Um, efficient solution that use, utilizes as little energy uh, as possible. And, and you have to uh, also use uh, uh, policy measures. Uh, 
we, we should remember that uh, we subsidize uh, the use of uh, fossil fuels in the world uh, to the size of about uh, 550 billion dollars at this point in time. Uh, and the majority of that is in emerging economies where you subsidize the price for coal or gasoline or, and so on. Uh, and total in the world, we subsidize the buildup of renewables with about 120 million billion dollars. So we, we have four and a half times more subsidies for consuming uh, fossil fuels than we have for building up uh, the uh, renewables. Uh, so the, here, here, there is a lot of money in the system that is being used in an unwise way in many emerging economies. And it's being used in that way for political reasons. You don't have the will from governments to raise the prices to the level where it ought to be, given uh, the cost for, for these uh, energy sources. So you subsidize. And then, of course, people uh, uh, use more. And if you have a situation like in India, where uh, energy uh, uh, is used for uh, bringing up water and there's no price for water and you have got subsidized price on energy. Don't be surprised that there, there is a, a looming water problem and that there is overuse of both water and energy in, a, in this country. You need, when you are looking at these uh, things, you need system solutions. You need to uh, understand how different parts of society uh, are interacting with each other. And when you start to change, you have to understand that if I change here, it will have an impact somewhere else in the system. Now, I, I think that uh, thorium energy uh, has a clear uh, potential, a very interesting uh, potential. Uh, and uh, I think uh, one has to really think about how you market that. If you go out and say this is nuclear energy, uh, which means you uh, make it sound like traditional old uh, nuclear power, it's not going to fly. One has to rebrand it into something else uh, if it's going to, to have uh, a true impact, otherwise people won't buy it.